Hi, I wanted to give a quick description of what I've been uh, working on with the Team C2 audio board. Uh, here is the audio shield or board. You can see that there is an SD card uh, jack in there that I'm not using. My main interest with Team C is to use it as a uh, inexpensive signal processor uh, with an arbitrary uh, effect graph. Uh, what I've been working prior to Team C has been the Mini DSP which you might recognize here. This is a mini DSP with a, um, an amplifier, uh, amplifier board on it. Uh, it's four channels of DSP, four channels of uh, Class D amplification. And this run for about $80 for just the DSP board and about $160 with the amplifier. Tinsy with the audio shield would be about $35, which is uh, significantly less if you can live with only two channels of audio. And uh, in this case, I'm working with this small uh, speaker that I just threw together from some components that I had. Uh, the box is uh, sealed, um, stuffed with foam. There's an 8-watt um, Class D amplifier in it, and uh, it takes audio input uh, via stereo uh, mini plug and 12 volts uh, DC. And uh, in terms of the code that I'm running on the TNC, what I've done is that I, uh, I wrote uh, my own spreadsheet and uh, while you can use the ear level engineering website and generate bike what's there, uh, I wanted to have something a bit quicker. So I created my own uh, Google Docs uh, spreadsheets for generating uh, high pass, peak, peaking or, or parametric, uh, low pass, low shelf and high shelf filters. And it already outputs the coefficients uh, in 32 bit format. And it will even give me warnings in the event that I may attempt to set up a filter with excessive gain. So for instance, if I try to set a filter here with a gain of six, you might see how it highlights my uh, coefficient here that exceeds two. And you know, the thin C will not be able to, to run this filter right uh, because of overflow. Um, so back to, to the thin C. Some of the things that I did here is uh, I was really concerned about latency. Tinsy uh, uses a, an audio block size of uh, about 128, uh, exactly 128 samples, and this is uh, this is given in AudioStream.h. Um, and I, while that is low enough for most applications, since I'm using it for an audio DSP and probably in a chain with other latency causing components like an iPad mini as a synthesizer, for instance, I wanted to bring the latency down as slow as I could. So what I did is I brought it down uh, to uh, blocks of 16 samples at a time. And, uh, and then if you look at my serial monitor, the processing time is at about 30% of the CPU memory seven that, that doesn't, uh, that would not be affected directly by the block size. I mean, the, the overall scaling of memory is affected by, by that, uh, but not the number that you see here, which is the number of blocks. Um, so just to give you a description of the, of the audio processing that I am doing here, I am running, um, first of all, four stereo bike quads, uh, which you can see here. Uh, basically, you have to declare parameters for each of of the bike quads independently, even if they are the same, because the parameters are also the state variables. Uh, that tripped me up the first time. Just make sure when you have multiple bike quads running at the same time, whether in a chain or in a parallel path, you have to have the parameter structures independently defined for each of them, even if they have the same setting. So you can see here, I have a, a high pass that's on 80 hertz, and that's of course. Uh, necessary for such a small little speaker, right? You need to have some kind of high pass. Set my Q to 0.9. Those are identical filters, parameters one and parameters two, but they have to be declared independently. So it starts with a high pass, and then I have three bands of parametric equalization in stereo. Uh, I have a, a cut at 3K, another cut at 200, and another cut at uh, 4K, uh, which I just, eyeballed for my speaker. I haven't actually measured it, but I could do that later. Um, and then 
The other thing that you may notice from this box is that it's a sealed box with two speakers in it running in stereo. So they share the air cavity. And uh, the problem here is that below a couple hundred hertz, um, the speakers really need to work in unison with each other. Otherwise, what you're going to have is uh, kind of a bump in the, in the bass region. If you just have, for example, the Beatles play and the bass guitar is coming out of, say, the left speaker only, then that's going to sound extra boomy than if the speaker had a partition down the middle. But I don't have a partition down the middle. And instead, what I did is, in my topology, I set up a series of mixers and a crossover. So I have a crossover at 200 hertz, which consists of a, a low pass at 200, uh, two stages, and then high passes at 200, and at two stages in stereo, two for the left and two for the right. And then I'm using three mixers, one mixer to create a mono signal that I uh, low pass at 200 hertz, and then uh, two mixers, one for the left and one for the right, that are used to bring back together the two sides of the crossover signal. So in other words, I'm monofying all of the 200 hertz and below uh, audio signal. And, and that helps uh, with some music, but most music is a very small difference, but it helps make the speaker enclosure uh, behave a little bit better. And the other thing that it allows me to do is, should, should I require further processing, such as split band limiting, or dynamic high pass uh, processing, anything that I may want to do on the low end only, now I can do it in only one channel of uh, audio instead of two, and there wouldn't be any sense in doing it in multiple channels, because this is a speaker that only has one air cavity. Um, so overall, I'm very satisfied with the TNC2, uh, sorry, TNC3.1 with the audio board. Um, sounds great. Uh, there is some noise that I have been trying to track down. I'll see if I can demonstrate. Um, keep in mind, I'm getting the microphone really up close to the TNC board. The TNC board is already gain scaled as best as I could for this speaker, but you'll be able to hear it when I get the phone up close, hopefully. And now, uh, to demonstrate what we're feeding as input uh, to the TNC, we're going to turn, I'm using an XS7 at the moment. I'm going to turn the volume down, hit play, and we're going to work our way from the minimum volume. So you can hear how, how noise is. A little bit of noise. Bring it up one notch. Hopefully you can hear some of the noise and some of the music now. And now I'm gonna turn the volume up a bit more. Boys and girls, shake your knees. And look up for your good years, free. Clap your hands, snap a finger to sing. And right now we are playing at full volume, and that's the full scaling that I manage for this speaker. Clap your hands, snap a finger to sing. Thank you very much. Uh, please post any comments uh, or feedback in the comment section. Uh, like and subscribe if you feel like doing it. Otherwise, you don't have to. Um, it's been a pleasure. My name is Aurelio Ramos, and this is my YouTube channel. Bye.